Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We're going to look at verses 29 through 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. The title of the message is, The time is short. Make this year count. The time is short. Make this year count. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they, have, they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it. For the fashion of this world passeth away. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for saving us from hell and for another opportunity to meet on this beautiful Sunday, Lord. Lord, thank you for uh, the chance to meet in the first place and uh, the chance to start off this year right on this Sunday at church. Lord, uh, whatever happened in 2022, Father, help us be better Christians in 2023. And as we listen to this preaching today, Lord, please help us reflect and to really commit our lives unto you today, Lord. Father, could you please be a pastor, Jay, fill with the Holy Spirit, Whatever you prepare, Lord, we know that it's from you. Father, please help us to listen to that and know that it's for us and to apply it to our lives. Father, Lord, open our ears and help us to do that. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. 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 The time is short. Make this year count. It's not too often that we have Sunday as January 1st. It comes every so often. It's a great opportunity to literally start the year off right. As Christians or non-Christians, everybody makes New Year's resolution because many have failed past year's resolution. I wonder if we were to have a statistical survey, how many have actually fulfilled all of their resolution from the previous year? How many even actually have a resolution you know, each year? And I believe in setting goals, and you should have resolution for this year. You can't be a just going with the flow person. You can't be a going with the flow Christian. Then you will just follow your old nature. You'll fall back to your old ways. You'll fall back to what's comfortable to your flesh. That's why as Christians, you have to live a life that counts. Many days go by where it doesn't count. I mean, 365 days last year, right? Or was it a leap year? Or, you know, uh, probably people can remember that far back. Either it was 365 or 366. Out of those 365 days, how many days do you think it was counted for the Lord? Was it the majority? Or was it almost every day, which we strive to be? Or is it very minimal? Or is it just like the average from, you know, spies, Canaan, two out of 12 months? So every half a year, only one month, maybe you dedicate to the Lord or you count it for the Lord. But when we read our text today, Apostle Paul said time is short. And that was 2,000 years ago. He was expecting the Lord to come back. And 2,000 years have passed by. How much more closer are we to Lord's coming back? We don't know, and we never say Lord's coming back on a specific day, like some of the cults do. But based on the biblical account and based on what's going on in this world, we know that we're close. We're living in the days of Noah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all the things that are right is deemed wrong. And all the things that are wrong are dim right now. Right? Just like in the days of Noah, I mean, when Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, I mean, homosexuals have more rights than anybody else now. And those are the end time signs, right? right? If you were to have a survey for the majority of the persons in this world, especially in America, 
how many do you think they would honestly say, I agree with homosexuality? It's an abomination in the word of God. Amen. Many would just say no, but people are scared, right? right? People are scared of being canceled nowadays. Obviously, you have to be wise as a Christian. If you have work, you know, if you have some positions, you know, in the pub political or public figure or public companies, you know, you do have to be careful. But it's not to the point where you just hide your belief, you know. Don't be a coward either. Amen. You have to be wise about it, pray about it. And we definitely know that we're at the end times for sure. And people are coming out with more theories, more conspiracy theories, more crazy ideas as the end times come. People say, the world's like this, pandemic has happened, right? Because the world's going to end. You've heard that many times. You know, end of the world is coming. Maybe they heard something from somebody. But according to biblical account, it is true. Right? We're getting nearer and nearer. Then if this is the last year of your life, you have to make it count. Amen. If this is the last year before the Lord comes back and take you up to heaven or you go to the Lord, you have to make this year count. If you realize how short the time is, your attitude and behavior and your priorities will change. The reason a lot of times people don't make any moves or take action is because they think that it's going to go forever. They think that, you know, our life will go forever. They think that, you know, I'm going to see tomorrow again. Why should I change today? I'm going to change tomorrow. I mean, that's the lazy Christian speaking. I don't need to read Bible today. It's January 1st. I'm going to hang out. I'm going to enjoy my day and relax. And I'm going to start my Bible reading starting tomorrow. I'm only one day behind. You know? You know, if you, if, if, in order to read the whole Bible, they say maybe three chapters a day and then five chapters on Sunday. You're like, okay, I'll make up that five chapter for today. Uh, I mean, you're already up to a horrible start. Yeah. I mean, so tomorrow... If you don't have work or, you know, maybe you have day off since today's January 1st, what do you think you're going to do? Have you already set up your plan? I'm gonna, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read the Bible when I wake up. Or have you been thinking about, hey, what are we going to do tomorrow? Uh, where can we go? Are we going to go play somewhere? Are we going to have enjoy our time somewhere? Then that day is not going to count. For the Lord. You do realize that after you get saved, whatever you do for the Lord will be judged. Some days you'll be counted for the Lord. Some days you'll be counted against the Lord. Then you and I have to make sure that this new year, 2023, understand that, you know, we might hang it up this year. You know, hang up the gloves. We might go back or go to the Lord this year. Then, if the Lord were to come back during springtime, which is like only like 120, 50 days from now, man, you, you and I don't have a lot of time, right? Sure. Then, when that happens, if the Lord were to suddenly, suddenly you hear this thunderous sound, you know, come up hither, right? Come up hither, brother. I mean, I probably your names, right? Come up hither. Man, in a blinking Blink of an eye, and then you're like, up there. And they're like, oh, man. You're happy, but you also going to be like, oh, man. Man, there's judgment coming now. <laughs> judgment of Christ. Man, am I even ready for it? Of course, you could be ready for it if you start now, if you yeah. start today. But if you don't change your ways, you will not be ready for it. Human beings are a very particular being, especially Christians. Unless you're disciplined enough to make sure that you change every day, you'll never change. Simple as that. If you haven't read the Bible for the past year, 
it's going to require great, great effort for you to start reading the Bible. If you haven't finished the Bible reading last year, it's going to require tremendous effort for you to finish the Bible. If you did not pray every day last year, it's going to require extra, extra, extra effort for you to pray every day. Then those things should be accounted for in your New Year's resolution. So I'm like, you know what? Forget about me being a lazy Christian anymore. Forget about me being a complacent, no-care Christian anymore. I actually want to be a Christian who understands that time is short and make every day count. Not just the whole year, right? Forget about the whole year. Let's start with one day at a time. One day at a time. So starting January 1st, I'm going to make it count. Then your life's behavior will change. You'll start thinking about, you know, what do I need to complete today before the day is over? Have you ever really wanted to complete things for the Lord before the day is over? When was the last time you really wanted to finish what you set out to do for the Lord on any particular day? Just an example. I'm going to read three chapters a day, spend 15 minutes with the Lord, and at least witness for 15 minutes each day. So total about an hour. If you have that goal in your heart, and if you set it, have you ever tried to finish it no matter what? Even if you work from 8 in the morning to 10 at night, do you try to finish it before midnight bell rings? Or you're like, you know what? It was such a tiring day. I'm just going to leave it to next day, next day, next day. You know, your, your, your nickname, my nickname should be Next Day Christians because, you know, you don't do it on the same day because, you know, your life shows you're not the same day urgent Christian. Your life shows you're a next day lazy, don't care Christian. I mean, as simple as that. Why am I saying this? Because I myself do it and through the you know, 25 years in the ministry, I've seen people in their spiritual state do it all the time. Then, it's a common fact. Just don't deny it. Many people like to deny it. Because you read that Bible one day, more than three chapters, you think you're good. Because one day, you actually pray to God because you're in such a hurt. You're in such trouble. You're like, you know, I have to go to the Lord. Because you needed something, not because you wanted to go to the Lord, you know, willingly, yeah. or because of the bottom of your heart, because you were in trouble because you needed help. You know, don't think about those days. I mean, are you really willing this year? Because you have free will. Unlike some religions say, or call say, you have free will to do it. Right. It's up to you. It's not up to me. It's not up to your mommy, daddy, your husband, wife, your children. It's up to you. It always comes down to you. Don't blame the situation. Don't blame the environment. Don't blame the world. Don't blame the pandemic. It's you, yeah. your heart. I mean, aren't you sick and tired of giving excuses Amen. all the time? Yeah. Man, Lord, uh, I don't have money, so I can't serve you too. Lord, I'm not healthy today. I can't serve you. Lord, I fought with my wife, husband, children, grandma, grandpa, my aunt, you know, my uncle, you know, next door neighbor. So I can't really serve you today. Lord, I just had a horrible driving day today, so I can't serve you today. Lord, I didn't really eat good food today, so I can't serve you today. And I'm too hungry to serve you today, right? You, you and I shouldn't give excuses like that anymore. Amen. I mean, if you don't do it, just own up to it now. Yeah. Then you might have a chance to change. And that's a very minute chance too. Because you think devil's going to leave you alone in 2023? He's not. Devil's going to work harder and harder to destroy your faith. Devil's going to work harder and harder to make you 
useless Christian. Then you're already working against a lot of things. The world hates you, contrary to what you think. The devil hates you, contrary to what you think, right? right? Then you have all these things working against you. Don't you think that you have to work extra harder to achieve and to follow and to make the Lord happy every day? Because people will ask, what's the purpose? Why are you here? Why are you here on earth, right? Why? Is it to buy a house? Is it to buy a car? Is it to become, you know, this high-ranking person in your company? Is it to have a great relationship with someone? You know? I mean, why are you here in the first place? You and I are here so that we could bring glory to the Lord. Amen. We're made to bring glory to the Lord. You and I can't forget that. Amen. And every day we should remember it during this new year. Then, how can you make sure you understand the time is short and make it count? One thing that you cannot do, first thing, is you cannot love the world. Amen. You're going to waste your time, you're going to waste your ear if you love the world. Right. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 John, 1 John chapter 2. If you love things of the world right now, you better get right with the Lord. If you love entertainment, if you love worldly things, if you love worldly possessions, if you love everything about the world, then you're going to waste this year. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. You've got to remember, as Christians, world is the enemy. Amen. The world hates you. I mean, unless you're like a really closeted Christian, you never share your faith. But eventually, it's going to show anyways. Yeah. Lord's going to put you on spot. Woo! Either confess me before man or just reject me. And I'm going to deny you at the judgment as well. Shame. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh... And the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. It's Lord's command. If you want this year to count, love not the world. But you have to understand, in order to not love the world and still please God and make this year count, how can you do it? You have to live a balanced life. You have to be a balanced Christian. Yes. What does that mean? Do what you have to do in the world as a great testimony. If you're going to school, do your best. If you are at work, do your best. But it has to be balanced. What does that mean? You work to provide means for living. Rest of the time, you spend it to do things for the Lord. You read the Bible, you pray, you witness, and you participate in the ministry. A lot of times people are obsessed with the world and things of the world, right? Yes. And it's very temporary things. Some people have to work some people have to be obsessed to get a certain car. Right? You know what? I have to get that car. You know? And you know for you to get that car, you have to compromise and sacrifice a lot of things in the Lord. Maybe you might have to work more. You might have to miss church. You might have to miss spending time with the Lord in a lot of things. You know, certain circumstances, you know, there are one of special circumstances. You do have to work more and more and more. You know, I'm not against, you know, working your best. But I'm saying, if you have the opportunity to balance it out, do you choose the world or do you choose the Lord? When you have time to spend with the Lord, do you spend time with the Lord or do you spend time with the world more? Because if you know and if you're honest with me, 
And if you're saved and the Holy Ghost lives inside of you, if you love the world, there's no way you're going to be happy. If you love the world, there's no way you're going to be joyful. Yeah. Why? Because Holy Spirit is convicting you. Right. Love not the world. Love not the world. Love not the world. That's why a lot of times you're full of complaints. That's why you're full of murmuring. That's why there's no joy in your Christian walk. Why? Because you love the world. When you check yourself and you check your spiritual state, am I a happy Christian? You're like, I'm not today. I haven't been lately. Simple answer. Because you love the world. I mean, loving the world I mean, includes everything. I mean, why do you sin? Because you love the world. Right? People who are obsessed with loving the world, what do they do? I mean, they gamble, yeah. right? Compulsive gamblers, right? They can't stop, right? People doing drugs, you know? People having, you know, wicked relationships. Yeah. I mean, people doing everything they can just to go up the corporate ladder, you know? I mean, people, like, wasting everything. Why? Because... They want to be something in this world. Do you want to be something in this world? No. I mean, is that your goal? No. I mean, say you work hard, you sacrifice all of the spiritual things, and you get to a place that you and your family wanted you to get to, and it wasn't in the will of God. What gives now? Do you think you're going to have joy? Do you think you're going to be, make the Lord happy? No. No. You're going to be... Nervous, you're going to be worried, and you're going to be regretting. Yeah. But compare that with, instead of loving the world, just like on Friday, you know, we're preaching out on the street, you know, very cold, right? But people receiving tracts, and people actually reading tracts, and you witness, and people getting saved. I mean, those are something that will last forever. I mean, I'll, I'll trade that any day, right? Yeah. Instead of loving the world, doing something for the Lord, and people actually getting saved through our ministry and through your witnessing, man, that's what you live for. Amen. That's when you know that, you know, you're making each day count. That's why you have to check yourself. Am I living today for the world or for the Lord? I'm telling you, if you live for the Lord, whatever you need, Lord's going to provide it. Yes. Whether it's house, car, whatever it is that you need, not what you want. Right. What you need, Lord's going to provide. And a lot of times, Christians are like, okay, if I live for the Lord, you know, my bank account has to grow. You know? And when your bank account doesn't grow, man... You're like, Lord, you don't love me. You don't care for me. I do everything to serve you, Lord. Forget it. You know, I'm not going to go street preaching. I'm not going to read the Bible. I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to witness. And it's all because of you, Lord. Man, how foolish are you? Yeah. And I'm sure some of you have thought like that because things weren't going right in your life because of you and you're, you alone because of your reason or your family. You know, like, oh, you start blaming God for all the things that's not going right in your life. You have to remember this, though. Lord wants what's best for you no matter what. Yes. Don't, don't change him. He'll never change. Right. So if things that aren't going well in your life, 99% of the time, it's because of you. Right. And it's right. because you love the world. I mean, you're disobeying Lord's command right off the bat. How can the Lord bless you? I mean, you're disobeying Him. Yeah. I mean, God is God of love, but with certain conditions. I mean, He's not going to be just out there loving someone who's just committing sin after sin after sin. They have to get right. Amen. I mean, the Bible says what? Jacob, I love, Esau, I hate it. The Lord actually hates things. The Lord hates people. Would you want to be in that, you know, 
hated people crowd? No. I mean, Lord will chastise you, thankfully, if you're saved. Because you're his child. Yes. Are you going to just wait until the Lord chastises you? How long are you going to be full of love for the world? You will never, never do anything for the Lord if you are obsessed with things of the world and if you love the world. Because people want to enjoy the world. Right? True. Do you want to enjoy the world? Just be honest. I'm sure you do. Right? You, know, you want to enjoy everything that world has to offer. And there's a lot world can offer. That's why, why do you think it's so hard for rich people to get saved? Why do you think once you start having money, it's hard to really serve the Lord, even if you're a Christian? Yeah. Because you want to use those money to enjoy the world. Nothing wrong with, you know, going on a vacation, you know, enjoying God's creation here and there, right? Yeah. But once you have too much, you forget the Lord. Right. I mean, that's human nature, isn't it? I mean, when Israelites were blessed over and over, they forgot about the Lord and they just complained. Yeah. I mean, they just committed some wicked sins. That's why you and I have to understand that if we follow the pleasures of the world, you and I will waste time, waste everything that the Lord has given you. And 2023 will be a wasted year. If Lord tarries, would you want 2023 to be a wasted year? That's why if you look back, and when you look back, all, the, all of 2022, what have happened? You have to get right with the Lord. If you waste the Lord's time, if you have loved the world, then you got to confess your sins. And you have to get right with the Lord. Don't just start 2023 not taking care of what happened in 2022. It's like you're trying to cover up, right? If you're cleaning up your house, if guests are coming and there's a lot of trash. So you put it you know, under the rug, right? Or put it in another room, you know, so they won't see. And then when the guests are gone, you take it out again. Or it just appears again. It never went away. So you have to seriously think about what you did wrong in 2022 and get right with the Lord. And then start 2023 fresh like that with the clean white sheet of paper. That's what you have to do. Holy Spirit has done everything that he could to convict you and convict me. It's up to you and I to listen to him, yes. right? And if you've been that nervous person in your Christian walk, you don't have to be a nervous person all the time. Amen. Just get rid of the love of the world and stop Stop making success in the world as your number one priority. Whether you're young, whether you're old, if you live to be successful in this world, then you're going to, what? Start compromising. That's the only way you could be successful in this world, if that's your only goal. But if you're doing your best for the Lord, you're going to be successful for the Lord. And sometimes you're successful in this world as well, if the Lord allows it. But sometimes you're not. Yeah. But you don't have to worry about not doing your best for the Lord. Amen. Now, you know, as Christians, you know, when the Lord opens the door and closes the door. Yes. If the Lord wants you to have that job and you've done your best, you're going to get the job. If he doesn't want you to have it, you're not going to get the job. You're okay with it. You're yeah. fine with it. Amen. But people who strive to be successful in this world, and that's their number one priority, even the Lord closed the door, they're going to go after it continuously, Lord's continuously, Lord. continuously. Then you're going against the Lord. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen when you go against the Lord's will? You're going to destroy yourself. Yeah. Sometimes it's 
like a freeway, you destroy yourself very quickly. And sometimes it's like, you know, morning traffic. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Well, you get to your destination of your destruction. That's why you and I, from the bottom of our heart, you know, we got to repent and get right with the Lord. Because if Lord were to come back today and saw you, I mean, would he be pleased about you? Would he be happy about you? Would he actually say, well done, that good and faithful servant? Or would he say, man, you wicked servant. You know, I've given you everything. I gave my life to you. I shed my precious blood to you, for you. I gave you the perfect word of God. I gave you local church to serve him. You are in the ministry. You have all the resources, but you haven't done nothing. Then think about your rewards in heaven. You might not have any. Even the sum that you were supposed to get, Lord, just give it to someone else. Right? Why do you only concentrate on present, temporal things? You and I have to think about permanent. We have to think about what's waiting for us for all eternity. Then this time short, time is short, will really hit you. I might, if Lord tarries, I may live, what, you know, up until 75, 80 or longer. That's a short period of time. Time passes by. Then within that short period of time, man, how much can I do for the Lord? You and I always say, how much can Lord do for me? Every day, right? Instead of saying, how much can I do for the Lord today? Man, 2023 should be a year where we tell ourselves, how much can I do for the Lord each day? Spending more time with the Lord is given. Witnessing more is given. Doing more for the ministry is given. You have to do it. If you and I spend more time on things of the world, then you and I are loving the world more than the Lord. Simple as that, right? If you have spent more time watching your cell phone, social media, TV, and everything, more than spending time with the Lord, don't say, I love the Lord more than the world. Obviously, your actions show that you love the world more than the Lord. With humble mindset, you and I can change. Then, simple things that we can do to make sure that each day counts. Number one is prayer. It's such a cliche topic, most talked about topic, one of the most talked about. But how many of you actually pray like you should? On your knees, not on your, you know, on your bed, you know, just try to fall asleep. But seriously, how many of you actually pray? I mean, Bible says what? Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors into his harvest. Watch ye therefore and pray always, that he may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Pray without ceasing. If you want each day to count, you have to have prayer life. You have to have a right prayer life. It can't be one or two minute prayer. You and I know that very well. Yeah. You and I can't just say, you know what I prayed yesterday? And you pray like 10 seconds for each meal, and you just pray at the end of the day for a little bit, the beginning of the day for a little bit. That's not, that's not a real prayer life. Real prayer life is actually spending some time with the Lord. I mean, that requires at least 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Ask George Mueller. Ask four fathers of faith. You think their prayer life was fulfilled each day by praying for five minutes? Fifteen minutes? I mean, they pray hours. I don't expect you and I to be like praying for hours after hours. Don't fool yourself. 
you're not there. You might never get there. Yeah. But at least, instead of watching some short clips on the YouTube for like an hour, 30 minutes, you could spend time with the Lord in prayer. Yes. You could actually get closer to the Lord this year by praying. You cannot get close to the Lord without spending time with Him. Just like in any normal relationship, you cannot get close to the other person without spending time with that person. If you want to get closer to the Lord this year, you have to pray. And you have to pray longer than what you've been praying. Amen. Because I don't think any of you guys pray three or four hours each day. No. Then you could pray longer. You could spend more time with Him. Yes. Then prayer will actually mean something to you. You have so many people to pray for in the first place. Yeah, right. Look at all the people around you. Just praying for their well-being as a Christian will take you about 30 minutes. Yeah. Especially if you pray for each person at least 30 seconds. I mean, if you really love the brethren, I mean, do you want to love the brethren more in 2023? Start by praying for each other. All right. Uh, that's how you love your brethren, you by praying for each other. Instead of, you know, I miss that brother. I miss that sister. I haven't seen him for a while. But you never even pray for that person. I mean, you're a hypocrite. You can't say I love that person unless you really pray for that person, especially brothers and sisters in Christ. And you pray for the lost souls out there. I'm sure you know some lost souls in your life. Yes. Your family, your co-workers, your acquaintances, somebody. How hard have you prayed for their salvation? I mean, literally. You ask people to pray for them, but do you even pray for them? And a lot of times you say things because you want to look good. Yeah. Because you have a status that you have to maintain you know i've been coming to church for like a few years so i can't look you know wicked or i can't look like so backslidden i'm a teacher you know I mean, i'm a pastor you know? i have some certain positions but be honest with yourself it doesn't matter whoever you are from pastor all the way down to you know peewee over there right. if you haven't done it you haven't done it yeah. You don't get any special privilege. You're the same. You and I are the same. Yes. We'll be judged the same. And you and I would have to give account to the Lord the same way. Amen. Then make prayer priority in 2023. Let it count. Let every day count because of your prayer. Another one. Of course, when we talk about prayer, we talk about studying the Bible. You have to search the scriptures. The Bible says, search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Remember the word that I said unto you. That's what the Bible says. Do you want to remember the Lord? You have to hit the book. Everybody says, oh man, I remember my loved one because they've done so much for me. <laughs> like, you know, if you lost your loved ones, why do you remember them? Because they're dear to you. They're special to you. They could be your, what, family. They could be one of the special persons that came across in your life. You remember them, whether they are living or dead, because why? They were special to you. I mean, isn't the Lord should be the most special person in your life? Shouldn't he be the, I mean, top of the top of all the things in your life? Yes. Amen. But don't say, I remember the Lord, when you don't search the scriptures. Yeah. Let's be frank. How many of you actually study the word of God lately? Besides from Sundays, Wednesdays. How many of you actually do any study? How many of you actually search the scriptures, you know, when you're not told to do it? I mean, we have our famous verse, right? 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself, prove unto God. 
How do we actually do it? Don't you want to be approved? Yes. I mean, don't you want to be approved by God? Yes. Then you got to search the scripture. If you want each day to count, there's prayer and there's definitely searching the scriptures. You have to study the word of God. I don't know I mean, how much time you have to spend, but I know it's more than five minutes. Right. You know, when you're studying the word of God. Because I tell you this, I mean, man, I graduated from you know, Bible college, you know. Do you think I retain all those? Never. It fails me, memory and things, every day. That's why you have to study and study and study. Amen. You have to study and study and study. Yeah. And especially older folks, anybody who's under 18, your memory is going to fail you. Oh, yeah. goes downhill. Yes. Then don't you think you have to spend more to remember? Yes. It's like this. We, a lot of times we forget where we put our car keys. House keys, right? That's like, honey, where's my key? You know, where, where did I put my key? And you have to think harder and harder because your memory is failing you. Yeah. I mean, if you have to spend that much effort to remember where, you're, where you put your keys, your to-do list, like you go to market, oh, I forgot to buy it today. Oh, man, I knew I had to buy it, but I forgot. <laughs> because, you didn't, because you have to constantly remind yourself. If you have that much struggle with, normal everyday life things? Don't you think you're going to have struggle if you don't spend every day searching the scriptures? The more days that you don't search the scriptures, the more inapt you're going to be when it comes to the word of God. To tell the truth, some of you don't even know whatever the preachers talking about or the Bible teachers talk about, whatever your brethren are talking about, because you never search the scriptures. They talk about Bible stories in the Old Testament. You never go there, so you don't know. You just nod your head. Oh, yeah. Man, that was a great story. It really touched me, you know? You just lie through your teeth. Oh, yeah, that's personable. Man, I love that story. You ask him back. So, so, so you, you, you know, right? You know? Like, yeah. So what part of it did you like the most? And, you know, everything. I like everything about it. <laughs> you know, once you start saying everything, there's something wrong with you. Because you don't know anything. That's why you say everything. It's like this. You know, I mean, husband or wife, what do you love about me? Everything. Yeah. I mean, there might be a truth to it, but like, I mean, you got to give some kind of specifics, right? You know, you just want easy way out. That's why. That's why as a Christian in 2023, you have to search the scriptures. So you're going to pray. You're going to search the scriptures. And obviously, what else do you have to do? You have to preach the gospel. You have to preach the gospel. I mean, Acts 1a says what? But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Are you going to preach the gospel this year? You passing out tract can determine someone's eternity. Have you thought about that? You giving a tract when you don't feel like it to someone can determine whether they spend eternity in heaven or they burn in hell forever. You opening your mouth about Lord Jesus Christ can help save a soul from hell, burning in hell for eternity, to spending eternity in heaven. But the thing is, every believer is commanded to spread the gospel. It's a command from the Lord. Not only, it's not just for the preachers to witness and preach the gospel. Every single person here and every single person listening you're commended by the Lord to preach the gospel. You have to tell as many people that you meet and you know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you might be the last chance for those people. The greatest news that we hear is when we hear from our brethren when souls get saved, right? 
your mom gets sick, your dad gets sick, your brother, sister, your children, your cousins, you know, uncle, aunt, everybody, your friends, you know, people around you get sick. That is the greatest news that we can ever hear. In 2023, you got to make that your goal. I mean, you have to plant the seed, though. That's the thing. In order for people to get saved, you got to plant the seed. And that's your job, and that's my job. Whether they decide to accept the Lord or not is up to them ultimately. But you and I have to preach the gospel. Prayer, right? Searching the scriptures, preaching the gospel. And you know what? That will ultimately show for 2023 that you are faithful. When you do those things, you're going to be found as a faithful servant. Isn't that the goal of our life? We want to be found faithful. When you are found faithful, that means your life exemplifies someone that expects the Lord to come, someone who wants to please the Lord and glorify God, someone who actually is close to the Lord in their personal relationship. I don't know about you. I am excited for 2023. Because 2022, I could have done a lot better. But 2023, Lord has given me, since I'm still alive and breathing, opportunity to actually make every day count for Him. Would you make every day count for the Lord? Or are you going to just love the world like you are? Let's pray.